Dogs is a Japanese style stop motion animated film that is directed by the one and only Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson brought out the big guns from a voice talent perspective for this movie. It stars Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, I mentioned her first because she's hot. Don't judge me. You've also got Brian Cranston, Edward Norton, you've got Tilda Swinton, you've got Jeff Goldblum, among other people. So what is Isle of Dogs? Well, Isle of Dogs is a movie that takes place in the future. It's future Japan in this big city called Megasaki, I think it's called. And in Megasaki, in future Japan, dogs have become a problem. That's right. Man's best friend is now man's biggest problem. Future dogs have contracted this weird disease that's called snout fever, I think, and it's affecting a lot of the dogs in the area, and this is leading to a lot of fear and paranoia among the Japanese people. A lot of people are worried that this disease is going to cross the human threshold and become a human disease. And so, the guy who is running for mayor of Megasaki, his name is Kobayashi, I think, he comes up with a plan to take all the dogs from Megasaki and basically exile them to another island and basically throw them away. That's what he does. He takes all the dogs from the city and he ships them off to this trash island place. And trash island is, for lack of a better word, complete trash. It's filthy, it's dirty, it's scrapping, the dogs are starving, they're not in a good place. But then one day, there's this kid that washes ashore. His name is Atari Kobayashi. He's the nephew of Kobayashi, and he is looking for his dog because his dog has disappeared on Trash Island. Now there's a select group of dogs that have to go with him on his journey to try to get his dog back. That basically is the bare bones of Isle of Dogs. I gotta say, I didn't really know too much about this film going into it. I had heard about it, I'd heard some positive buzz, but I went in clueless. I obviously know who Wes Anderson is. Is. I mean, Wes Anderson is a guy who has a very distinct visual style, and I've enjoyed some of his films before, but him tackling this, I was curious to see how he'd do. I gotta say, this is a dope-ass movie. You gotta start with the visuals, because of course the movie is eggs on its head. Some of the best stop-motion animation that I have seen in a very long time. He does a great job with the animation in this film, and also the hand-drawn animation is pretty good, too. Hand-drawn animation in this film is utilized in, like, newspaper clippings or newsroom editing clippings where they have to, like, narrate through some and they have to show you things physically. Whatever animation they used in this movie, it worked. It looks beautiful. This movie is absolute eggs on a tip. I already called out the voice talent for being as good as it is. You would expect those actors to do a good job with what they're given in this movie. Brian Cranston, he plays this dog named Chief, and Chief is probably the best character in the movie. He has the most backstory. He has the most to do. His story has the most emotion to it. So when you're following Chief on his journey to try to help this kid reconnect with his dog, you connect with it too. The bottom line is I think a lot of dogs Dog lovers are going to really get a kick out of this movie because this movie does get into the deep emotional reasons of why is dog man's best friend. It breaks that down on a nuanced emotional level and it really gets into the why and the how of dogs and man and their relationship. And so if you're a dog lover or if you have a deep connection to dogs in general, I feel like you're going to walk out of this movie with a smile on your face. It is clear that Wes Anderson took inspiration from Japanese style films when he thought about the idea for this movie. It's like he took dog lovers and then he took Japanese culture and he put it together in one movie and made a huge ass love letter to both of them. So if you're a fan of Japanese culture or if you're a Japanese person who loves your own culture obviously, I feel like you're also going to get a kick out of this movie. More to the point, this movie also went places that I wasn't expecting. This movie had kind of a dark undertone to it. Not only did it have a more serious and dark undertone than I was expecting, but this movie also had some political subtext and messages that definitely came out of left field for me. Don't worry, it doesn't bog the movie down or anything and you can still enjoy this movie for what it is, which is really a straightforward adventure about a boy bonding with a group of dogs to try to get his dog back. At the same time, if you look under the surface of this movie, it does have some substance. It does have something of a thematic nature that is there for you if you're interested. So in the end, when you have a dark and serious toned movie that has some good humor in it, that has a few good characters, that has a great animation and style to it, more often than not, you're going to walk out of the movie feeling like, yeah, yeah, this is, this is pretty damn good. Man, you know that sucky feeling though, like when you walk out of a movie and you want to say that you loved it, like everything in your your body. Your soul is basically screaming at you to love the movie, but then there's a couple of nagging things in your head that just won't let you enjoy it all the way. That's how I felt walking out of this movie. I walked out of the movie and my soul was like, hey, we love that movie, right? Go ahead. Go ahead. We love that movie. And man, my brain was just sitting there like, ah, 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 I, I can't quite use the L word. I want to, but I can't quite get there. Just for the sake of argument, let me try real quick. I have to say, I love dogs. I love 
lesbian, this movie. All these years later, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is still affecting my life. What can I say? One of my issues with this film is in the way they handle the dialogue and the exposition scene. Now, this is gonna sound like an ignorant American complaint because I'm not Japanese and I don't speak Japanese language, but they did say in this movie that people of that culture are going to speak in their own language and the dogs, you'll hear them talking in English. And to be fair, there are a few scenes in the movie where Japanese language is narrated and you can kind of understand what's going on, but there are a lot of scenes in this movie where Japanese people are speaking in their own native tongue and there are no subtitles. There's no explanation for what they're saying. And just for me personally, it took me a little bit out of the movie. It was hard for me to connect with some of those scenes because I couldn't understand what was being said. This is a little thing. This is a nitpick that doesn't really affect the movie. And again, if I knew how to speak Japanese, I probably wouldn't be saying this. But I'm just going to have to be that ignorant American and say that, hey, there are some scenes in this movie where I couldn't connect with the scene because I didn't know what the hell they were saying in the scene. I gotta say my biggest issue with this film is probably the way it handled its characters though. It didn't really do a good job at juggling it effectively over the course of the narrative. There are some character interactions that aren't really fleshed out. There are some character backstories that are teased and hinted at but aren't really fleshed out all the way. Then there are some character interactions that feel a little bit rushed. There are some characters that feel like they're going to be important but then they feel very unimportant the longer the movie goes on. I feel like it's a narrative that kind of jumps all over the place in regards to its characters. I feel like it could have juggled all that a little bit better but sometimes it felt like a movie that had a little bit too much to chew on, no pun intended. Well, I really, really like this movie. I can't say that I, 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 I can't say it, but I lesbian this movie a lot and I'm going to give it a good rate. So in the end, Isle of Dogs is going to land somewhere in the Silver Age for Man of Steel. Alright guys, I think Isle of Dogs gets a wide release this Friday, so you guys should check that out when it comes out this week. I can subscribe to the Super Fan Show and as always, if you like what you see, tell me how you feel and stay tuned to hear more from the Man of Steel. Peace!